Welcome, everybody. This is the voice of Joseph R. Wheeler III, the artist, the founder, and the president of the Honest Khan Foundation. Welcome back for another Honest Khan Film Festival feature presentation. Today, we're talking about Godzilla X Kong, the new empire. Godzilla and King Kong are back, and this time, they're not necessarily adversaries, but they're teaming up against a common foe. Now, before I get into my opinions and theories about this film, I want to make it clear that views and opinions expressed during this presentation do not, and I repeat, do not necessarily reflect those of anyone who is an affiliate, associate, sponsor, or individual supporter, corporation, what have you, of Onyx Kind. I said that, and I want you, you might need to rewind it, because we're going in, and I want you to know we're going in. As a matter of fact, I want you to know there will be spoilers. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're going to spoil the hell out of this. So don't, don't even continue unless you have gone and seen the movie, if it's your choice to want to see this film. I would highly advise that you see King Kong versus Godzilla. I would also advise that you be a fan of some level of kaiju. Oh yeah, we gotta get deep and explain things to the average person that doesn't know the real deep history, the real nerdy history, the real, uh, <clears throat> for my black folks, blurred history, word, okay, feel me, all right, of this genre, all right? Kaiju means giant monster, okay? Giant creature, giant monster in Japanese. So, this is a long, and I do repeat, long historical lineage for these characters. This didn't come out of anywhere. This has been developing over generations. And I am one of those folks who is a serious fan, born in the 70s, in my 40s, who's a true fan of the genre of kaiju, of science fiction at large. First and foremost, let me say, as a fan of Godzilla and of King Kong, I most loved the creatures. I always most love the creatures. I like the monsters. I like the battles. I like the sci-fi fantasy of it all. That's the number one thing I'm going to always pay for when I go see one of these movies. So rest assured, if you're a kaiju fan, if you like giant monster films, if you like sci-fi, and if you like a lot of action, you're going to get enough of what you came for to generally appreciate this film. I said enough because, well, it wasn't quite enough for me, but it was just enough that I don't feel like I was wasting all of my time. Now, why do I feel sour about this thing? <sighs> it's always the damn people. You know, I've even seen people who are fans like myself of kaiju films say, can we finally at one point in the history of this genre get a film that only shows the creatures? Like watching a nature movie, you know what I'm saying? Like you sit down and you watch Nature Planet, you sit down and you watch Mutual of Omaha back in the day. Oh yeah, I could take it back there. You know what I'm saying? And you enjoy it. You enjoy it. It's awesome. It's incredible. You got the voiceover, if you will. Sometimes no voiceover, which I even prefer sometimes. I don't even want to hear a person. I just want to see the animals doing what they do. I want to see the plants doing what they do. I want to see the rest. <laughs> yes, you heard the word rest of nature because we are one. Doing what they do. That's all I need. That's all I really need. I don't need the human interpretation misinterpretation half the damn time and all of that. I just want to see the animals doing what they do. Now, we can all leave it up to interpretation what we think they're doing from our human perspective and leave it at that. And at the end of the day, this is all fantasy. So it's all created by humans and it's all human interpretations of actual things in nature and why things go the way they go and what they do and it's people putting their own political social and everything else stuff into these characters so it will be that but at least i can sit there and enjoy it for just that just the visuals of it just the the, the absolute beautiful marvel of it when it gets into the fights when it gets into the sentimental moments when it gets into whatever the hell's going on that ain't got nothing to do with some damn people doing some people shit oh yeah we going hard on this one i told y'all cut it off if you ain't ready this ain't the one if you don't want the truth all right this is a woke presentation now what do i mean by woke 
Even if your baby ain't got no money to support you, baby. No, I stay woke. No, we're not talking about your political agendas of people who took a word that has been used in communities of African Americans since time be gone, all right, to express being aware, staying aware, being current, paying attention, knowing who your enemies are and who your friends are, knowing even in your own community who your enemies and friends are. This is where woke came from. It has a damn thing to do with current political agendas. So if you're looking for that garbage, again, you're in the wrong damn place. We speak the truth, nothing but, and we going in on it. So my concern with this film is that there was a lot, and I do mean a lot, of layered symbolism that was quite disturbing. Things that I realized as I was watching it, I said, man, this is really in your face. And it's not that we haven't been here before. It's just that why are we repeating this when I say we? Not that I'm the one who would have created this kind of mess. I'm saying as an as a fan of the genre, having to sit through this. You know, we're all involved, whether you made it or you're part of it. And by the way, I'm in the film industry. So I, I take this very serious when I do these reviews because I might have to work with some of the people who are either the writers, producers, creatives of, of some sort, the actors, who I want to say for the record, I admire your work. You're all doing stellar work. You didn't get to make these huge budget films from being complete the untalented people you're all very admirable for what you create and what you're able to create my issue gets into the fact that at the end of the day human beings bring all of their luggage with them and they unpack it in their creative process i'm an artist too i'm a writer too i'm a producer too i just don't have a hollywood budget to put out what i want the world to see from my perspective but hopefully thanks to youtube and other platforms like this People can realize there are a lot of extremely talented people like myself who have other visions of these genres that we'd like to share with the world. But unfortunately, because of gatekeeping and other, man, you know, all that stuff you hear about is real. People don't often get the opportunity. I'm at a point in my life where I want to make sure I voice my opinion, whether it is a threat to my so-called career in Hollywood, because guess what? I wear many hats in Hollywood. And whether I ever get to be a major famous actor or well-known writer or whatever, I'm going to still create what I want to create. And I'm going to put it out because I have other artists, friends who think like me, who want to see visions that are not tainted by all kinds of twisted agendas and other stuff going on time and time again. What do I mean by that? What's the twisted agenda? There's so many. Let's start with one and pick them apart piece by piece. First and foremost, if you know the history of Kong and Godzilla as characters, Godzilla technically, if you want to make it real quick and simple, represents the fallout of the nuclear bomb that was dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima in Japan. He is the fury of the Japanese people. And he is the fury of the land. He is the fury of nature itself for what humanity would create to be so diabolical and create something and destroy so much for the sake of war. Godzilla is that. That and other reasons I love lizards and so much more are the reasons I love Godzilla as a symbol and what he represents. I relate to his anger because of the things that people do to nature and have the audacity to try to control it like people try to control Godzilla if you look at the way he's always written. They're always trying to chain Godzilla. They're always trying to control him somehow, some way. And he's like, I don't care what you do. I'm not going for it. <laughs> okay? Alright. Then you've got Kong. Kong comes from a history of racism. It's a fact. It's not a... It's This is not a conspiracy theory. It's fact. If you look up the history of the writer, the original creator of, God, of King Kong, you're going to find a man who had physical statements of his racist opinions and agenda towards black people in the time that he wrote the character. It's not something hidden. It's out there. Look it up. Do some homework. Do something besides believe everything and never look up stuff. Research, realize, and revise. Kong has also been used historically 
when you go back to the first King Kong Godzilla film, King Kong versus Godzilla, in my grandparents' age, the characters were meant to represent the United States and Japan. We all know the history of World War II, or if you don't, you need to, so that you can understand the era that both of these characters came out of from the 50s and the 30s, if you go back to Kong, okay? So my point is that when the movie were, when the original characters versed each other, it was meant to represent these countries and their different grievances. But there was Toho Unlimited, the Japanese company that made the original Gojira, it's Gojira in Japan, films, teamed up with the American production companies, made two versions. There's a Japanese version where at the end, Godzilla wins, Gojira wins, okay? There's an American version where King Kong wins. So either way, <laughs> everybody had a win-win and everybody got paid. Pay attention. Try not to swallow your tongue. What? So my issue with Mr. Bernie Hayes in this movie, Bernie Hayes as a character represents a tired trope. What is that tired trope? He's the ever brilliant but still adolescent in his actions, black man. No matter how brilliant and amazing his mind is, he still acts like an immature child. What? Oh my God! He still is always scared of every fucking thing. And I mean, he's scared of his shadow. He's always bucking his eyes. He's always, what is that? Oh, where are we going? Oh my gosh, what's going on? <laughs> While everybody like else. Thought you'd never ask. Especially everybody white and lead. Go back to my two characters, talking about Trapper and Eileen Andrews are cool as a cucumber. I'm talking about too cool. I'm talking about in a scene, the, the scene that Captain- Bernie Hayes gets an opportunity to, after he has helped the white woman who comes to him as the scientist asking for your assistance once again, because you're so brilliant, black man. We need you, we need your mind, okay? We pick your mind, we get your information, and then they're gonna leave him behind. Now, I don't know if this was in the script, Maybe it was something he asked for because the way he delivered the lines in that scene, I was very proud of this. And I thought maybe this is where we get the film I need here. Maybe this is where the character steps up and stands on his 10 toes and is a man for the rest of this goddamn movie. No, instead, he didn't do that after this, but in that one scene, he checks her and says, look, oh, you're done with me? You're gonna leave me here? You guys get to go on the cool mission and see the creatures that I'm always talking about and hypothesizing about, but y'all actually get to go see what's really going on? No, that's not cool. Don't disrespect me. I'm the reason this whole thing is even happening. And she's like, okay. But it's like, pat on the head, little boy. Okay, we'll bring you along. Okay, don't bug me to death about it. Come on, you're such a burden, right? And then he gets on the aircraft and he's buckeyed and he's the only one with his face shifting every direction when they go into the portal into the land below where everybody else, including the child, is sitting there all cool in their damn pilot seat like, oh yeah, just routine friction, you know, a little bit of turbulence on my flight, no big deal. Only my man is the one looking silly nonsense has got to stop. Now, let's compare this to a history of this in film. We can go all the way back to Step and Fetch It, and we can march it forward through the Civil Rights Movement into the 70s, into the 80s. Oh, let's stop at the 80s. Let's go with my man Richard Pryor, the absolute legend of comedy. When he appeared in Superman 3, playing yet again, just watch the trailer. Salkine presents Christopher Reeve and Richard Pryor in Superman 3. This time, Richard Pryor has come to Metropolis. Oh, I'm sorry. And he's got something to sell. <laughs> he's the best con man and the world's greatest computer genius. Let me tell you something. I can't ski! But then he falls. 
a scheme to turn the ultimate computer into the ultimate weapon. Well, what would it do for me? It would do anything you tell me to tell it to do. A machine so powerful. Baby, it's daddy! It can control the earth. Oh. Now, getting down to business. Oh, and it don't stop. Let's go to Transformers, the first Transformers film. Anthony Anderson. What did he play? Another brilliant recluse who had all the great conspiracy theories that were always true that got... Yeah. Oh, gosh. Pulled in by the man again to help save the world. We disrespect you, but when we need you, we come get you. Come in, tear up your house, pull you out, put you on the mission, and the whole time you're the one who's least intelligent, even though you're the most brilliant, because you still act like a child and you need adult guidance from yet again to white folks that know better than you. The, when are y'all gonna get tired of yourself? Like, when does it not get embarrassing to keep it? This is like a Saturday Night Live joke that keeps being told. I can't wait for them to spoof this. It's obviously ridiculous at this point, y'all. Get over yourself and do better. Not because it's the thing to do, because it's overdue. So I got one last one for y'all. Now this one goes really deep. And I wanna stress, like I said in the beginning, I am not saying anything that is meant to offend anyone. I'm just analyzing and looking at what's in front of me and having the nerve to think beyond what I'm watching. Why was the one Scar King, the orangutan reddish haired gorilla amongst a slave camp, which he's enslaved all these other gorillas that are black haired gorillas, just like Big Kong, okay? We all know where gorillas originate on this earth, where they are to this day, what's left of them after human decimation, okay, right. But he's got reddish hair. You want to think politically and how to use symbolism? What nation? Every nation puts red in their flag because of the blood spilled of people in wars, etc. But what's the big red on the earth right now? What's the big red with the yellow star? And I'm not bringing this up because I got anything against individual people. I got personal friends from this country and I love my friends. I even have family. So it ain't about that BS. So don't even bring that up in here. I'm just talking about what I know they do in these films and what they use for symbolism. And I'm saying that I feel like it's a political statement about the use of their power in the nation where gorillas are from, and we'll just leave that part right there. The other part would be, there's a scene where they have a big fight in Brazil, in Rio. Now, this was after another fight in Egypt, ancient Kemet, where they destroyed the pyramids. Now that's happened before in films in another Transformers movie. It's like, why do they keep tearing up the pyramids for? Right? Okay. Because <laughs> that's the most ancient wisdom, the most phenomenal wisdom, the most established, undeniable, African-rooted, original history of governance of a major civilization in humankind history. They know this. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. But they keep playing this game of, we wanna tear that down. We wanna, we wanna use it. Again, we wanna pick your brain, brilliance. But then we wanna dismiss your credibility. We wanna say aliens built the pyramids anyway. So we're gonna tear that down. What we do wanna keep standing is our mythology based on what is true. We're gonna take the mythology that we spread everywhere across the globe. And you'll see that when they went to Rio and fought, I said, are they going to tear down the, the big white version of Christ standing over everyone on the mountain? No. It got frosted, but it did not fall. The pyramids crumbled. And when Godzilla got tired as a warrior, he went back and peacefully rested in the center of the Colosseum in Rome which we all can know from history, in film and otherwise, Rome is regarded in Western culture as the pinnacle of an empire that they admire, that they want to be like. So he's our great warrior. Even though we can't control him, 
we got we think we can control Kong, but we want to control Godzilla. We just admire him so much, but at least we've got him resting when he gets weary and our on our battleground. He fights in a way for us, even though he destroys all this stuff. It's so twisted in all the metaphor. But y'all do what y'all want with that. I ain't got nothing else to say. Because I already know how silly it's going to get in the comments. But just watch your mouth and understand that it's all edutainment. Y'all have a good one. And know that if you say something really silly, we vet everything. And it'll never see the light of day. But for those who are uh, woke, join the party. You can deny the lie, but you can't deny the truth. You scared. You scared. Say you scared.